Hello everybody, welcome to Artful Connections. We'll start at 11.30, which is one minute away. I'm so excited. Got Widow's Peak on blast today. I hope everybody's doing well, dealing with our third week. For some people, it's our fourth week. Hello, people, as you're joining, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Yvette. We're going to, going to make some art today. No experience required. Um, I am not a visual artist, and I hang out with visual artists, and I know what kind of skills it takes, and I don't have those. <laughs> and I certainly haven't practiced those skills a lot. Um, but art is a really fun way to uh, de-stress and relax yourself. And if you don't stress about it, don't judge your work too hard. You can make something that you might be proud of. Um, I have an example of something that I'm proud of. I took a line for a walk two weeks ago, and we're going to um, just use this as a springboard for what we're doing today. You're not doing this. <laughs> your work may come out looking very different because it comes from you. Hello, Emma. Hello, neighbors. I'm so glad you're here. So right now it's 1130. We're going to begin our Artful Connections and we are going to take a look at what materials we might need. Yeah. Here we go. Ta-da! Two pieces of paper. So I make these signs by writing them backwards and then tracing the other, no, writing them forwards and then tracing the other side of the paper so you can see me struggling with handwriting. So these are the materials that you will need. Two pieces of paper. I have two pieces of paper that don't even match each other. That's fine. Pen or pencil or marker or just something to write with and then any colors that you like to work with. You can uh, use crayons, colored pencils, markers, or paint. So I'm gonna let you take the time to gather those materials and I'm gonna keep on moving through the, the rituals that I like to have for workshop. Okay. So three dings of the bell, um, clear the energy in my space and in your space since you're listening too, and the the thing is to let the sound fade in between each one so that you're really allowing that sound to do its work, right? really helps to center me. I'm so happy to be here with my neighbors and friends and doing uh, something called a value sort that ends in a little art project today. Um, here are the materials that you'll need, so go ahead and get those. Um, I'm going to welcome everybody into this space. At Art Force Iowa, we welcome people of all genders, people of all ages, people who can write and people who can't, people who can communicate in more than one language, people who are immigrants or come from people who have emigrated, people who are survivors, people who like to talk and people who don't, people from all over the world, people with loved ones who are locked up or far away or not accessible to us right now, 
people who have struggles with their parents or guardians or caregivers, people who have family members who are no longer here, the indigenous people of this land who took care of it for 10,000 years before us. And we welcome the artist in you. If there's anyone else that you would like to welcome to our community, uh, please do so in the comments. And if I see them, I will certainly welcome them. Thank you so much. Um, whether or not I see them, they are welcome. <laughs> All right. So here are your materials, two pieces of paper. They don't have to match a pen or a pencil or some kind of thing to write with um, and some colors. We're not going to use the colors till later. So I have mine laid by the side. I'm going to work with watercolor today. This is a really nice kit. I love the colors in it, but you could use crayons, colored pencils, anything that makes you happy, right? Cool. All right. So this is a little bit of an inspiration piece and I'm just going to let it rest over here. We can come back to it later. Um, one of my favorite things to do with like non-artist people is move from messy to neater kind of work. So we're going to start off by ripping paper. Um, before you go crazy, you want to rip the paper into sizes that are like at least like the size of that you could write a word on it. So I'm thinking like the size of your finger or something like that. You don't want to have tiny little scraps of paper because we're going to be writing one word on each little piece of paper. So let's get started to rip in. You can fold your paper up and this is to score it. All right, so I'm just rubbing my thumb along the edge of the paper to get a nice fine crease on there. Flip it over, do the same thing and rip. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> I tried to rip a nice clean line and it did not happen with this paper. That's okay. Um, since this paper is not being obedient, I'm going to just keep on ripping. And I think a good size piece of paper, you don't want to really get much smaller than that. So keep going. Once you discover the grain of the paper, it's a little bit easier. And I fold it against the grain and it did that. Oh well, that is okay. With the grain. You want to get this whole piece of paper ripped up. A little bit more right here. Of ripped paper. Now I'm going to challenge you to write a word on every piece of paper that you have ripped. If you started with a piece that's like really really big and you have a thousand pieces, well then maybe you don't have to do that. Um, but I would bet if you had 50 pieces you could fill them. And I think I have a lot less than 50. But what I like about art is that like everybody's different and if your piece comes out looking the same as somebody else's, like maybe it's a good copy, but it's not good original art. Like to me, good original art, I don't know. I don't know what good art is. I really love stuff that's big. I've never done anything big. Um, but I think good art like comes from the heart, has a purpose, is led by something that's marries like the head and the heart and the spiritual. All right, so I spread out my little sheets of paper 
And now I'm going to look to this for a little bit of inspiration. So I took a line for a walk two weeks ago and then I colored in my spaces and then I started to add words to it. And I just started to do this actually during a conference call. <laughs> and I put in words that to me are things that I value. So now I can use this as inspiration and refer to this as things that are important to me. Um, you can refer to it too, but things might be really different in your world, right? And that's very okay. Um, let's write on our first scrap of paper, something you value. Now we wanna stay away from people's names because we're going to start putting these things in order and we do not wanna be in the business of ranking <laughs> family members because that's not the purpose of this, right? We want to um, explore the things that we gravitate towards, the things that we want, the things that we feel that we need in our lives. So what's the first word you're going to write? I'm going to write a word that starts with K and ends in Eindness. Oh, <laughs> that happens, right? You just run out of space because you started here and then you end there and that's okay. That's the way my kindness looks. If you value kindness, go ahead and write it. If it's not something that's important to you today, don't write it. What's another value? Something that I think is really important to me. Well, being loved, feeling loved. That's really important to me. I have family that's far away, but they still find ways to make me feel loved and I try to find ways to make them feel loved. So that's gonna be one of my values. Right now I just have kindness and loved. Dropped a paper, I'll get that later. Okay, something else I value. You know what? <laughs> I just looked at this. And I'll tell you what that reminded me of. I really value fun. The past three days, like I really appreciated every time I've laughed really hard. Um, just feels good to laugh really hard. So fun. Okay. Let's see, these are the ones that I have started. And let me just give a, take a little break to tell you what we're listening to. It's very faint in the background. It's on YouTube, it's Metaverse Music, and it's music at 417 Hertz. And you'll have to Google that to learn more about Hertz because I don't think that I'm enough of a physicist to explain that to you. Um, but it just has to do with, I think, vibrations and sound and the way we, we receive it. And 417 is the frequency that is known to produce rejuvenation and relaxation. So you might want to look that up yourself. There's different Hertz's, different levels that are recommended for like thinking or concentrating or for falling asleep. Um, right now we're in our relaxation and rejuvenation mode. All right. So what do we value? We're writing these on our papers. I just talked a bunch, so maybe you got way ahead of me and that's totally cool. Um, I value family. like as I wrote this I'm like I'm wondering if what I really value is like family and friends and relationships because I don't I think that it's relationships that I want to think of so why don't we put this one aside and I'm gonna write relationships because that's, that's the word that works for me right if you want to write family you write family if you want to do a separate one for friends you can relationships 
spelling backwards. <laughs> there we go. So far I have kindness, I have fun, I have being loved, I have relationships, I have a lot of other scraps. Now you could put some suggestions in the comments and I won't write them down unless it's something that I really do value. Because we're all allowed to have different priorities and our priorities really should change as our life situation changes, right? Oops, <laughs> does that say food? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> food. Um, good food. But I'm just doing one word per page. When I look at this, I know this means food that's yummy to me. I love green food like asparagus and kale. I love protein food. I love chicken. I love noodles. Food. Okay, what else do I value? I value, oh, let's get into like the things, right? So I really, I've done this activity before, I won't lie. And I have come up with the same number one value a lot of times when I've done this activity. That's been my number one value for years but I'm doing this activity with you today and I'm gonna see if it's still true because my life situation has definitely changed. I might have different priorities. Um, you could think about the work you do too, like whether it's your schoolwork or your professional work. What do you value there? At Art Force Iowa, we work a lot with um, young people who are involved in the court system, and justice looks different to different people. Um, so helping a young person navigate that process and figure out like how they can come out on the other side, proud of what they've done, is a big challenge for us, something that we strive for. So justice, understanding justice and knowing what it means um, let's see. And as I'm thinking about work, I'm thinking about something that a lot of our youth value, young people who come from other countries and other cultures having to acclimate to the American culture. I took a trip to Japan two years ago for only two weeks and it absolutely blew me away how difficult it was to feel normal and communicate in another culture and I was only there for two weeks and there are young people who were like babies or 10 years old who come to America and they're thrown into this completely different culture um, that is a really difficult thing to navigate and I can't say that I know how I would do it. I just know that I really struggled uh, with a limited time in a different type of culture that I felt I couldn't be myself in. You can't be yourself when you can't communicate the language. That's the thing, right? It's not about like foreign culture. It's about being able to say what it is that you mean or tell people what you need or what's happening, right? I was, I could say please and thank you. And that was enough to survive, but not enough to communicate. So I think communication is going to be a value of mine. Communication. Oh, wow. Ran out of room there too. As long as I can read them, right? <laughs> All right, I still have at least 10 of these left. Creativity and health. Oh yeah, thank you so much. Health. What is everything if you can't get up and move around? Thank you. 
creativity. Creativity makes me think of all the ways that we're coping right now. Like not just um, doing creative art workshops online, but just being creative with our time so that we're not doing things to waste it. Um, I was talking to some people yesterday and they were like, well, is it now a great time to figure out like an untested talent in yourself and put it to the test, right? What's something that you've always wanted to do that you haven't tried or made a half-hearted effort towards? Is it is now the time to approach that? Um, yeah, I have, I have a visual arts goal. I'm going to make some make some work that I'm proud of. I'm not sure what yet. And I also have um, a performing arts goal. So it's going to be writing some text for the stage. Maybe we'll call it a play. We'll call it a script. All right, let's see. So we have health, creativity. What else do I value? I'm going to choose the word security, even though I already have safety in there, but I think to me, they're two different things. Um, security has to do a little bit with like relationships too. Um, it could be your professional relationship, right? Knowing that you have job security, imagine. Huh. I have one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven left. Can I do eleven? Yeah, I can do eleven. I value. You know what? I'm going to start to think of um, things that. Oops. My N is backwards. Backwards N alert. <laughs> This is an important one, I think. You can take this one if you'd like to use this one. I'm gonna look at the things that I wrote. I wrote laughter, I wrote generosity. Laughter I think I covered with fun, so I'm not gonna write that, but I do like generosity. Generosity is important because I make mistakes a lot. I'm not a perfect person and it takes a generous person to understand my intentions, help guide me the right way. So I really, really value that. I've just given up on trying to make these words fit nicely on the paper. Let's see. I value teamwork. I wrote cooperation and collaboration, and I think that that teamwork is the word I'm going to choose. You know what that does? It makes the dream work. Okay, let's see what other comments you have. See if I missed any. No, I don't think so. Okay, cool. What do you value? I'm wondering if anybody's going to put money. It's okay if you do. <laughs> um, if I'm being honest, I'm not proud of this, but I, I do value money as someone who's never had a lot of it. It is pretty important. It helps make this a reality, right? Okay. Ooh, that money gave me like a, what's the opposite of money that I value? Spirituality. Is that the opposite? I don't know. Spirituality. Whoa. 
There's a little piece of art right there, I feel. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many do you have left? <laughs> six things that I value. Ah. I've never thought of this as a value before, but I really value animals. I love them. Should I put trees on a separate one? Or should I put animals and trees together? I, I like them so much that I'm gonna give them each their own. I value trees and all of their littler cousins, except poison ivy. do I value? Oh, yeah. I wrote this word and not equality because equity has to do with not all things being equal, but all things giving equal opportunity, right? So I might not need free college, but somebody else might to get to a level where they're ec at equity with me. So they should be able to get that, right? So that's what I think. And then while I was just talking about education, oh, I just can't seem to get these to all fit. <laughs> but we'll talk about the hyphen and how helpful it can be. <laughs> Learning. Um, I think learning is a lifelong thing and oh we have some backwards n in there too that's amazing oh we're gonna let it stay we're just gonna learn that there is one correct way to make an english n and it's that way <laughs> yeah but learning is something that can happen outside of school can happen outside of any kind of like we're always learning all the time maybe we're learning that that person should no longer be trusted or we're learning that um, this kind of activity is boring to us or that we don't really like hockey, right? We're learning all the time um, and we can kind of unlearn and relearn too, like our entire lives, which is pretty cool. Let's see, let's see. Two more values, two more values, things I value. Well, I did, I did create some inspiration, so let's see what else. Connection, passion, music, focus, empathy, acceptance, energy, authenticity, fire, reciprocity, balance, growth, art. I didn't put art as something that I valued. That's crazy. Well. Mr. Arthur, art for short, you get your own. And there was a lot I really liked on there. I think I'm going to pick for my very last one. I'm going to be very symbolic. The last thing, my last value the last thing found in Pandora's box. It stayed there. All right. Well, are we ready to make art? Yeah? Nope, not yet. Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to take all of our values and we're going to make sure we can read them all. So spread them all out. And you want to leave yourself a little room in the center because what we're going to do is make three lists. 
three lists. And the first list is going to be the ones that are the most important to you. And then the middle list is going to be the medium most important to you. And then the last list that you put together will be, I mean, they're all, you're no, they're all super important to you, right? They're all important, but they're going to be the least important. So it goes like most, middle, least. So get to sorting. Don't be afraid to think out loud too, because you, you kind of have to sort through different ideas and priorities as you decide where they go, right? So just make sure you do it like most, most, most important, medium is important, and then not as important. You decide what order that's in, right? If you like to work this way or you like to work that way, that's okay. All right, I am going to see what has to go in my most, most important to me. Boy, kindness was the first one I wrote and that feels really important. And guess what? This is hard, right? These are all things that you love and now you have to sort through them. And it doesn't mean you love anything any less, but now it's more about like what's most important, like maybe for your survival or just for you right now, what's most important. See, if I was hungry right now, like meaningfully hungry, this would be at the top. But I am lucky and I'm privileged enough that I don't have to put this at the top because I have a full refrigerator and a full freezer. So I'm very grateful for that. Oh, my mailman's coming. I'm sorry, mail carrier. And she's awesome. I give her cards and I wonder if she is even allowed to open them. <laughs> but I write a lot on the outside envelope. Uh, so that if she has to throw it away, she at least sees that there's love coming from this house. Because I can't imagine how you can stay six feet away from your coworkers at a sorting facility. I just, I don't know. Okay. This is a struggle, right? This is not easy. And I'm going to have to stop talking in order to do this. <laughs> hope you're sorting through your values right now and it's okay to be like completely feeling like you don't know what to do because I'm kind of like that right now. I'm just going to try to follow my instinct and then realize like it's not like if I put animals on one side of the my paper that there won't be any more animals, right? <laughs> everything ending up in your most important column. That's okay, it has to. But try, try. And now I feel better that I wrote this one down because for me, I can express my distaste for how important it is in my life by putting it in the not the best pile in the least important to me of all of these important things. And I think what I'll do is I'll put mine on tape. So like this tape, <laughs> so you can see. We don't need this anymore. Okay. 
you could save these little scraps of paper and do this again some other time and see if they're different. I think it would be really neat also um, to do this with your partner um, or your children to see what your different values are. Um, I, did, I did this a bunch of times with coworkers at Art Force Iowa before I brought it home to my husband because I was like, what is his number one value? <laughs> We've only been married 10 years. Um, and it was enlightening and interesting to find out that we had different number one values, but that they were kind of complementary. Um, yeah. So I'm going to sort through these and show these to you. that's terrible to look at. <laughs> I love it. All right, I'm getting through this. I'm getting through this. It's like once you just start to say, all right, I'm going to make these columns. I'm going to make decisions about what's most, most, what's medium, and what's you know, the least right now. The least needed, maybe right now. I'm not cheating. I just got rid of a little scrap. There's no cheating in this anyway. If you decide that you want to arrange these in a heart, you know, that's fine with me too. But in order for us to sort it, you have to have it in three columns. Oh my goodness. I've come to my least, least most important value. I'm just going to line it up on some tape here. Yeah, I don't feel good putting things on the least most important side. <laughs> but I'm not gonna judge myself about it. It's just how I feel right now. Oh my goodness. So, have you had your sorted? Do you have three columns? I really struggled and I rushed it for you. <laughs> so I understand if you're struggling and you're not done. I do wanna make sure that we get to the end of this activity and then you can do it on your own time or abandon it. Sometimes that's okay too. If it's not really important or mission critical, it doesn't have to get finished. It's not like this is a paper for your English teacher. Okay, so this is what I chose for my least most important values right now. I'm not gonna dwell on that. This is my medium list. This is my most valued things today at the moment. And now we're only going to pay attention to these. I have to take this list and put it in order. 
So to make it easier, I'm not gonna pay attention to the way, I, yep, I'm not gonna pay attention to it. I'm just going to put it in the order that I think, I'm sorry, I'm not going to stay in the order that I just put them on the tape. I'm going to give myself a chance to resort my number one-est. And you know what? Health isn't coming off the top and that's probably not an accident <laughs> because right now, more than ever. Okay, so take your list of your most important values that you created today, move aside your other values for another day and we're going to rank in order our most important in this list. Everything's crucial in here, right? Everything's super important, but now you can think about like what's foundational and what's nice to have or what's crucial to you today. Um, and again, just like trust your instincts. There aren't going to be big decisions made about your life based on this. It's just another thing to know about yourself and where you are today. figured it out. I don't know if it's changed too much since when I first held it up, but my line of thinking is pretty clear since I cleared the board. And then what I value about this activity is the conversation that can come out of it, right? So if we were in a room together, we'd have an opportunity to share why our list looks the way that it does, right? Because we each have our own way of thinking about how these things relate to each other. Um, I would share that this, to me, um, is all the people I love, and that's what's most important to me right now. Um, that's all I'm thinking about is the people that I love. Um, and what I'm thinking about is their health and the health of our planet. Um, Kindness is super important to me today. I think an unkind word from someone could probably like put me in a really bad place, which in a, on an ordinary day, that wouldn't happen. Um, so I'm feeling kind of thin skinned and kindness is really important to me. Hope, I've woken up feeling kind of hopeless a few days. Sometimes when you watch the news and you see images or hear things that are really powerful to you, uh, you can feel hopeless. We are not in control of what's going on right now. So it's really important to have hope that, um, to have hope that what? To have hope that we can get through this, be stronger, wiser. This used to be my number one value and now it's number five. Um, I'm kind of safe in my home right now, like physically, safe. Uh, not leaving the house kind of prevents a lot of dangers in your life. So it moved down, um, but there, it's still, you know, related to the health. And having fun at home is super important to me. Honesty, especially like emotional honesty, like I need for my partner to tell me that he's struggling and I need for him to be able to hear that from me too. <laughs> um, and that's the communication, I suppose the art, which I kind of do a little bit of every day, and then the trees that I appreciate so much outside my window and when I go for walks. Um, I always like to ask a tree for permission to touch it and then <laughs> that is something I am not socially distancing myself from, is trees. So 
we just did all of this thinking about our values and it's time to make art. Can we make art in 10 minutes, 15 minutes? We sure can. So you're going to take your number one word and make it into art. I chose a word that is not very beautiful to look at. It's not like I didn't choose love, which is would make a good piece of artwork. But that's a challenge for me, right? I'm going to figure out how am I going to make the word relationships look pretty. So I'm going to start with a pencil and think about how I want to write it. Right? Is, this, is this a word that should be scripty or is this a word that should be bubbly? Um, I also have to be mindful of the fact that it's a long word and I want to try to get it to fit on the paper, but I could break it up. So you think about your word and maybe doodle it a couple of times and just sort of decide like, oh, should I write the word in block letters, all capitals? Should I break it up? There's a very famous piece of art that looked like that, L-O-V-E, and it's a weird way to break a word, but like people have necklaces that look like that and there's, it just shows up all over the place. So however you break up your word is cool. And I know I'm not going to try to do relationships across there. I'm going to try to reorganize. And I am not really good with lettering. I'm not really good with any visual art, but I really like it when you um, make your lines for your letters really thick. I feel like that makes things look cooler to me. And so instead of having just like a single stroke L that goes like that, you draw a single stroke L and then you add more weight to that line so that your letters aren't all like weak and one stroke each, but they have like some strength behind them. So right now I'm just starting with, I'm not going backwards, but I'm starting with big letters and then I'm going to make them thick later. So I just laid this out in pencil. Relationships. And I'm gonna go over it with a little bit of marker. It's okay if your lines are not perfect or they're a little wobbly. How am I going to make this look good? Ooh. And that was maybe too judgy a word to use. I don't know about make it look good, but how do I add color to this? Just use a few brushes. That way I can use a few colors. This 
this guy's called La Cucaracha. He's a puppet. You might see him again. <laughs> All right. So time to add color to my number one value. And this is where I have really like no hints for you. The colors just have to come from you. Is it a multicolored word? Does it only have one color? I really like to work with a flat brush when I'm trying to do letters because it almost acts like a calligraphy pen. You can pay attention to the slant and get thick or thin lines in one stroke. It always helps if you have your tongue out while you're making art, it really does. This green is making me happy. I usually don't go for green. I'm thinking of my coworkers at Art Force Iowa, and I'm wondering if their number one values have changed. I'm thinking of my mom in New York. I'm wondering what her number one value is. Hers might be dancing. All right, so I decided that this is going to be alternating green and another color. I want to get my lines really thick. Now, if you're doing colored pencils, your artwork may come out completely different looking, right? It might be really like a smaller thing that you make. Maybe you decide that you want it to only be like this size so that you could add lots of color to it and not have to spend forever on it. Maybe you haven't started making your art yet. Maybe you're still sorting. That's okay. color goes well with green in this artwork. How about a different green? Whoa! I just want to put this in the frame because it's such a pretty collection of paint. Well, that's not green at all. That's pretty blue. Oh well. got seven minutes left. We're just going to hear the beginning of that music we were playing. Or not. <laughs> not. So I wonder if anybody else has been watching um, YouTube videos for creative ideas. I am trying to sprout an avocado seed. I've never done that before. I understand that even if you do get roots out of a seed, it could take like 10 years for a plant to bear fruit. Um, so I'm not really planning on quitting my day job. <laughs> but it would be exciting to see roots come out of a seed and plant that. That'd be cool. I planted some cat grass for my kitty. I just found that in a desk drawer. I was just kind of lucky. 
maybe when things calm down, calm down, we can go get some seeds and plant. So far, oh, look at that little spot there. That's gonna have to turn into like a happy face or something. So far I've got my background down. I might wanna get the letters a little thicker and use a different color. I could also go back over this with marker and go around the paint and then add another layer of paint and then do marker. It's just important to let it dry in between each step because then you'll ruin your markers and no one wants to ruin a Sharpie. So if you're watching me now or later, I'm so grateful and so um, happy that you tried this adventure with me. Um, even if it frustrated you, I'm super interested in hearing about like what your thought process was or what your results were or anything that you wanted to share with me. Um, this is an activity that we like to do at Art Force Iowa when we're first meeting young people. Um, we have a list of uh, values so they don't have to write their own. Um, and it's like a magnetized board so you can slide things around so it kind of feels like a game. Um, nobody's really complained too much about it, but it, like it's a great way to get to know something like really core about someone without like interviewing them and getting all questiony, right? Because all of these kind of organic conversations come up without having to ask questions, right? I don't have to say something like, why did you put this over that? Um, because people want to share like what their thought process was um, and why they might have ranked fun over safety or why culture is so important to them or justice is so important to them. Um, and it's also like for me and I think for everyone who cares to know their number one value, it can guide you. Um, when I, the first time I ever did this and I learned that my number one value was safety, I was kind of annoyed because that's not really a fun thing. Um, it's kind of like a boring thing, right, to be safe. Uh, and it just made me realize like, wow, that's super important to me. And that's why in certain situations, I can't have fun because I don't feel safe. Um, it might explain why I don't like scary movies because <laughs> I don't feel safe while I'm watching them. Um, so taking a look at my new number one value, relationships, it, like, it helps me maybe prioritize the things that I'm doing. Like, should I empty the dishwasher or call my mom? Easy. <laughs> Whereas maybe, you know, a few weeks ago, I would have emptied the dishwasher first. Um, so yeah, this, is, this sort of thing is not meant for any kind of absolutes. Uh, I just think learning about yourself through art is a really fun way to go about it. Um, it's a fun way to learn in community with people. And it's a really cool way to springboard a conversation that does not depend on language so much, right? Like I don't have to have this massive vocabulary to say that I think justice is important. It's also a fun chance to like learn new words, right? I bet some of you use words that would be new to me in your values. I was thinking of using the word cuisine instead of food and I was like, all right, <laughs> it's really food you like, let's just be honest. Oh my goodness. Tuesday Artful Connections are drawing to a close. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you learned a little something about yourself. I hope you continue to make art at home, whatever way you like to. Um, and if you share this activity with anyone, oh my gosh, I would so love to hear that. If you wanna share your art, please post it to the Art Force Iowa Facebook wall. We would love to see it. Um, we love seeing divergent responses to stuff, right? That means it's just everybody's are so different. And that does like really, that's our favorite result is how different everyone's response can be, right? 
even if you're following the same sort of instructions. So this is just going to get bigger and bigger and I'll show you what it looks like next week. Something tells me that I might use some Google eyes on this artwork. <laughs> Stay safe, wash your hands, love one another, and we'll see you real soon. Thank you, everybody.